Yo, is the picture clear or is it uh, blurry? Is the picture clear? Shout out to everybody, man. I got these shirts on my website, gumbypublishing.bigcartel.com, if you want to get one of these shirts. Hit the life button when you come in, man. Hit the life button when you come in. Shout out to the whole world. Thank everybody, man. Um, is the picture clear? Is the picture clear? Why do, if, if, if you love yourself like you say you do, why do you allow people to treat you a certain kind of way? Why do you accept certain treatment. Brookswell, thank you for your channel membership. Hey, Brookswell, is the, is the picture clear, man? I want to make sure so I can take it off Wi-Fi if it's not clear. Man, look. Look, man. When you love yourself, You love yourself. Okay, thank you, man. If you really loved yourself, you wouldn't treat yourself certain ways that you do. You would... I don't know, man. If you loved yourself, you'd be willing to do anything for yourself. If you loved yourself, then you love your children and your grandchildren and the children you're never going to meet. If you love yourself, and if you loved yourself, you would understand that the true love of self is to facilitate and to protect and ensure the furtherance of your name and your legacy, that it ain't about you. If, 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 if I love myself, man, the good life, thank you for your channel membership, man. The first three comments is from my channel members, man. Thank you. They got the logo. Join the channel membership. If I love myself, which I do, yes, I do, then my first thoughts is about Little Sean. Check me out. Don't you pause this live and listen to what I'm telling you. Shut up and listen to what I'm telling you. If I love myself, 
the way I say I do, then I have uh, resolved in my mind and I have happily concluded and I understand and fully accept that my life and my stimulation and my pleasure seeking is subordinate to the foundation and the springboard and the jump start and the head start that I give in my case little Sean in your case your children if I really truly love myself I understand I can see my death I can see my uh, mortality I'm closer to my mortality than I am to my birth and if I truly love myself I can see that and I understand that it's okay if I don't get what my son or daughter gets and what my daughter or son, their sons and daughters get. If I really love myself, I'm living today for my posterity and kids I ain't gonna meet because I'm still gonna be alive in spirit and in the mind I won't be here physically but I'll still very much be alive because death is only the end of a physical existence depending upon how much of a meaningful life you live while you were here in the physical form will dictate your meaningfulness in the spirit and mental form when you're gone But I was conditioned. I need y'all to hit that life button, man. I was conditioned. I'm guilty. I was conditioned to think me, my, and I. My pleasure, my achievement, my accomplishment my things, my house, my cars, my clothes, my money, my getting pussy, my having fun, my partying, my, let me stimulate me as much as I can while I can not even considering my offspring and the offspring that my offspring is going to bring forth. Understanding that I have the ability to impact, I have the ability to create and to mold children and grandchildren I'm not going to meet based upon what I do today in the physical form and if I really love me that's what I would be working on if I really love me If I really love myself, I'm diligent in my works. 
I'm taking care of my mental health. I'm taking care of my spiritual health. I'm taking care of my physical health. Because when I'm operating at optimal and peak performance, Eric Brown, thank you for your channel membership. When I'm operating at my optimal peak potential I'm eating right I'm sleeping right I'm exercising I'm spiritually balanced then I can bring my best self to every task in front of me And I can lay the groundwork for the kids, my children, my son, little Sean after me and his children and his grandchildren. If I love me, then I know it ain't about me. I didn't had my time. Hmm? You know, I never used to be able to understand why my mother did for me what she did. Joseph Adams down in Kentucky, man. Thank you for your uh, always going to support SG locked in 24-7-365. You ever wonder why? Well, let me keep it on me. I don't know about your life. You look at your life and you decide for yourself. I used to wonder why my mother did so many things for me that required a whole lot of money. Her taking her savings and betting on me or getting me out of trouble or spending it on my education or paying for my drug rehab. I used to wonder like, and she, she never, she used to buy me cars, I crash them, she fix them, the auto body. And she never would ever say, you got to pay me back. I want that money back. I never understood that. When I was a child, in my teens and in my 20s. Because when you're in your 20s, you're still a child. But it ain't been until recent, until I had my own children, my own child, until I had little Sean, that I understand, like when I give little Sean something or I spend money or whatever, it don't matter. I don't need it back. I don't want it back for some reason. If I give it to somebody else, a girlfriend, a lady, a friend, or, I want my money back. I want my money back. But if I give it to my child, I don't care if it come back. You know, and if you're lucky enough, if you're lucky enough to make it the way you can have children, if you're lucky enough, what's today's date? What's today's date? Somebody tell me today's date. What's today's date? The 10th or the 11th? The 11th. Today's the 11th. If you lucky enough to have kids, maybe you feel this way, maybe you won't. Thank you, Eric Brown. But I do. Um, you know, I don't, because 
I need what I'm trying to do with my son. What I'm doing, I ain't trying to do a motherfucking thing. What I'm doing is giving him my soul. The 12th, okay. Right? And that's the best thing I can give him. That's the best thing I can give him. Give him my soul. And that's loving me. That's loving me. That's loving me. Because if I do that, No, you can't have none. So don't ask me for none. Go buy your own strawberries. No. No. Look at this nigga. You cool, bro, but it's your pride that causes you to fail. That part, give God your soul, give your son God. You sound like a true sucker, like a true Uncle Tom slave nigga. <laughs> Yasuba, that's how you sound. Get off my channel and don't never come back. You barred from this channel. When you love yourself, you don't think about yourself no more. You think about your kids and you think about leaving them in a better circumstance than what you came through. And you have to be willing to even sacrifice your own life for it. Not this. See, unlike this clown right here with this comment, you are God. Man is God. The God that you seek is inside of you. You are in control of your destiny with your thoughts and your actions. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You are what you think about. And you have the ability and you have the power to effect your destiny, man, and make your world what you want it to be. Yes, you do. You know, and it's a constant self-examination. Sean, are you doing everything you possibly can to effect and bring into real world manifestation in physical form your ideal scenario for your son and your granddaughter and your grandson are you putting them in the best possible are you doing everything today because Sean you out here you're competing with men just like you 
everything that's going on, everything that we see is man-made. Everything. And that I am only limited by my belief in myself. That's the only thing that holds me back. Them two birds right there. And the shackles that have been placed on my mind that I can remove at will. And that's why I go as hard as I go. And that's why I love me as much as I love me. And that's why I engage in much, as much positive self-talk as I possibly can. And that's why I tell myself the things that I tell myself. that I show myself as much love as I possibly can, that I speak as much positive self-talk to myself as I possibly can because I understand that I am the God of my world and I make my world what I want it to be with my judgment, with my choices, and with my decisions, period. You know, I guess the title of the video, Why Don't You Love Yourself, is just more like a rhetorical question for you to ask yourself, because I don't know you. I don't know your life. I don't know what's going on with you. I don't care what's going on with you. I care what's going on with me. But I know that that was a question that I had to ask myself and that question, asking myself that question was the beginning of change. And I guess me wanting to inspire change with my platform, I figured was a provocative enough question to when you get off of this live and you late tonight and you were brushing your teeth before you go to sleep or you putting your pajamas on or you getting ready to get dressed to go to work or if you at work, it's a rhetorical question for you to ask yourself, do I really love me? Do I love myself? And let me be honest with myself. Why would I do this? Why would I be engaging in this? if I love myself? Why would I be allowing myself to be talked to like this if I love myself? Why would I be letting these people transgress against me if I truly love myself? Why would I be volunteering for this type of pain if I truly love myself? Why would I be wasting time if I truly love myself, why would I be procrastinating about, do, about doing that if I truly love myself? Why wouldn't I be making these phone calls? Why wouldn't I be doing this? Why wouldn't I be trying to better myself if I truly love myself? It's a question for you. And it's a question for me that I have to ask myself. I talk all that fly talk. I come on here and I talk all that fly talk to y'all. 
Y'all go, ooh, ah, Sean G, positive, ooh. But I got to continually take myself to task. I got to continually turn the searchlight and the magnifying glass and the microscope inward and ask myself, am I doing everything I can do to build my life the way I want it to be? I got to constantly uh, see the war is with me. I tell you this all the time. I'm my biggest problem. Me. Me. I'm my biggest problem. I'll go upside my head in a minute. I'll rob me at gunpoint in a minute. I'll jump out the bushes on me in a minute and tell myself I can't do something. That's too hard. You can't do that. I'll hold me back. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. But at least I'm aware. At least I'm aware. Any comments or questions from my members? Any comments or questions? Any one of my members want to throw a topic out on the floor? Let's deal with it. I'm done. I'm going to open up the floor now to my members. It's open floor for members only. want to get this shirt, this shirt is on my website, gumbypublishing.bigcartel.com. I want to thank everybody that's bought shirts. Appreciate you. All right, Eric Brown, State of Hip Hop, how do you feel about it? Eric, I want to keep it, let's, let's, let's keep it on, uh, Self-love. Let's keep it on the topic of the video. If I said open topic, that would be my mistake. We're going to keep it on a closed topic, which is self-love. And what's the topic? What's the name of this video? Do you really love yourself? But I want to I wanna keep it on that. So that's my mistake, Eric. Right. I want to stay on topic.
How do you activate your self confidence? That's a good question. Shout out to Eric Brown. Um, Eric, man, it was a long, for me, my story. And um, it may work different for other people, but for me, um, I had to be backed into a corner to where I was the only one that was going to get me out. Right? And having back been having been backed into this corner, having been having put myself in this particular circumstance, and being afraid and unsure, Eric, if I was gonna be able to come out. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to. I doubted myself, man. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I didn't believe enough in me to believe that I could survive what I was going through and that I was going to be able to make it and that I was going to be able to make it back, a comeback. I was there, Eric. I was there. I was at that extreme. Eric, I was at that extreme, not knowing if I could make it. And just, just holding on for another 24 hours. That was the best I could do, was hold on for another 24 hours. And I tell y'all this story all the time. Little Sean used to look at me. He was a big reason, Eric, why I made it. He was a little baby. He was about 18 months old, 17, 16 months, 15 months. Right when he started talking, he was a little baby. And I was in this, I was enveloped in this circumstance. And he would come up to me, Eric, and he would say, uh, I love you. He would just say it out the blue. And I would look at him like, why? Why do you love me? Because I don't. In fact, I hate me. And I hate me. This is around 2013. And what that would do, Eric, is that would fill my cup for another 24 hours. And I held on for another 24 hours and I held on for another 24 hours and uh, eventually I strung together enough of them 24 hours to where um, the sun came up, the sun came up again, and when you go through these, uh, challenging moments in your life, when you go through these trying times in your life and you survive them, if you don't take your own life first, if you don't allow your spirit to be broken and you don't put it back together, if you don't allow your will to be fractured and cracked and you don't put it back together, you could stay stuck there forever. But if you make a comeback, like what I did, I know what it feels like 
I just uh, shared it with y'all that I didn't believe, that I didn't know, and I survived it, and now I'm on this side and my confidence is sky high that I know that I could survive anything, right? Because I look death in the face. See, I read in a book, it said, uh, you must have needs, you must have no you must know, you must, how does this shit go? I forget how it said, I had it committed to memory You must have wish to die in order to know how good it is to live. You must have wish to die in order to know how good it is to live. I read that in a book. I was in the Count of Monte Cristo. You need to have wish to die in order to know how good it is to live. So that's why my self kind I mean, I don't know, that was my experience, Eric, with how I got my confidence. Now, I've always been, um, um, a somewhat confident guy, you know, extrovert, you know, never shy. I've always been that way. Um, but my confidence was, it wasn't built on nothing. It wasn't, it wasn't rooted in anything, you know, unless I was drunk, you know, I had beer muscles or, you know, it was, my confidence was rooted in, in, in um, wasn't rooted in anything. But the confidence that I have today is rooted, is real, and it's rooted in experience and true knowledge itself. There's a big difference. OG, oh, hit on the role that exercising and staying fit plays for you as a form of self-love. Shout out to Brookswell. Brookswell, thanks for your um, membership. The role that working out and looking good plays in my role of self-love. See, when you look good, you feel good. And my position is that a man should look like a man. You should be fit, you should be strong, right? So the body, see, you're supposed to look like this. This is, if, 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 if you not looking, see what I'm saying? If you not looking like this, see what I'm saying? This is what it's supposed to look like. You understand? How could I not love this? How? Why I look like this? You don't think, Brooks, well, I get out the shower, I'm drying off, and I'm, I see this chest. I see all this. I see these balls of soap. And it feels good to know that I look like this. I'm proud of my physique. I'm proud of how I look. I'm proud 
of the work that I put in to look like this. You understand? Brooks World, you laughing, nigga. I see it. Peeled on y'all. Man, I peeled on y'all. You understand? I take pride in how I look. Everybody can't look like this. Everybody, God damn it, y'all playing with me. See, everybody can't look like this. Everybody can't look like this. Huh? Everybody can't look like this. The tight, the trust, the bicep torn, everything. Got the eyebrows up top. Look at the eyebrows right there. All types of separation. Bowl of soup. You can eat a bowl of cereal right there. See, so I take pride in how I look. And I'm egotistical and I'm arrogant and conceited with how I look because I put the work in and I know everybody can do this. Everybody don't have the diligence, the determination, the focus, the consistency, right? The mentality, the mindset to work out for nine years straight. You see the goddamn turtle shell, don't play with me. You understand? Don't play with me. Nine years in a row, man. 108 months in a row. So that's where the self-love is. Y'all need to go buy one of these shirts. If you buy this shirt, that don't mean you're going to look like this. Eric Brown, what's up, man? Brooks World say he peeled on. Eric Brown, Brooks World, give me another question. Y'all, come on. Y'all the only members in here. There's some more members in here. Keep it on self-love. Let's talk about self-love. No. No. No, you can't have none. You go buy your own strawberry. Look at that. Look at the green thing. Look at the green. I, I eat the whole thing. I eat the whole thing. That's why I look like this. Devin, you're welcome, man. Thank you for supporting the platform, man. Go get you one of these joints right here, Devin, or the other one, man, with the... uh. With the with the with the big signature, this that dry fit joint. I don't know why this shirt look good on me like this. I don't know why I look good like this. I love you, Sean. I love you too, Sean. I love you, Sean. I love you too, Sean. I love me, man. I love me. I love me. I used to hate me. I don't hate me no more though. I look too good to hate me. I look too good to hate me. I think too good to hate me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, Eric and Brooksville, let's go. Another question. The floor is open. It's a closed topic. The closed topic is self-love, but I'm opening up the floor to all my members. Hi, Sean, this is Eric's wife. How do I get the turtle shell? I'm buying E a t-shirt. See, see the goddamn turtle shell, goddamn, you gotta see the turtle shell in your mind. Um, the first time I saw, like, what made me believe, and shout out to E and his wife, thank you for the question. The first time, I began to believe that I could get a turtle shell was 
when we used to work out in prison, after we work out, all the niggas would come back to the unit and it was a big mirror in the bathroom. It was about seven sinks. Boop, boop, boop. It was a shower on that corner, a shower on that corner, shower on that corner, shower on that corner. And it was like four toilet bowls right here and three urinals and about seven sinks. And after we would work out, we would all come back to the bathroom and get in front of the mirror. We'd come in the bathroom and peel. we come in the bathroom and peel. And everybody is arrogant. Everybody is egotistical. Everybody's conceited about how they chest. My chest look better than your chest. My arms bigger than your arms. Yeah, but you ain't got no cuts. Yeah, you got a chest and arms, but where your abs at? You ain't got nothing. And then one nigga will come in and he have it all together. Chest, arms, abs, and everything. And a few niggas, and I didn't have no abs. I was just strong. I could bench press a lot. You know what I'm saying? But I, I looked like a trash can. I looked like a boiled egg with legs. I had no abs. And I used to look at them niggas and they used to talk to me. They used to say, yeah, nigga, you strong, but you don't look like nothing. That's what they used to tell me. You don't look like nothing. But we all, it would be fun, but it'd be bragging rights because everybody in the mirror with their shirt off talking about how great they are. And I said, man, I look at my stomach. I say, damn, man. I got a belly, man. I got a goddamn wheelbarrow stomach. And I said, let me, uh, I'm gonna get me some abs. I'm gonna get me some abs. And it was this one nigga from Kentucky, black nigga. He was, uh, I forget his name. Me and him ain't even really get along too tough. He ain't like me and I ain't really like him too tough. Uh, but this nigga, man, with just his T-shirt on, you could see all of his knots. The trap muscles would be sitting up in the T-shirt. His traps would be, and I, you know what I'm saying? And the niggas that look the best, the niggas that look like that would rarely take their T-shirts off. They would rarely peel because they look good, right? And this ain't no gay, I'm not a gay man. I like pussy, I'm not a gay man. We just men and we talking about my experience in the joint. But when these niggas, like the nigga I used to work out with from Michigan, Kalamazoo, Mr. This nigga, this nigga look like a model, man. Like them Calvin Klein models, man. And this nigga from Kentucky looked like that. And they used to get on me, man. Yeah, nigga, you don't look like nothing. That's what they used to tell me. And I didn't. But I said, you know what? I'm finna get me some abs because these niggas ain't gonna keep talking to me like this. And I went to the nigga from Kentucky. I said, man, how, how you get, how you look like that? I wanna look like, I want what you got. How I get abs? And he said, man, first thing you gonna have to do, man, is you gonna have to cut out all the sugar, man. You understand? I see you all the time. You go to the store, to the commissary, you come back here with a pack of Milky Ways. You got a pack of Three Musketeers. You got some two six packs of soda. You got honey buns. He said, all you eat is sugar, man. He said, man, all you eat is sugar, man. He said, you gotta cut out all the sugar. Every time we go to Mainline, you go get you a uh, Kool-Aid drink or a lemonade. That stuff ain't nothing but sugar water, man. He said, man, I drink water with every meal. 
I drink water with my breakfast. I drink water with my lunch. I drink water with my dinner. I don't, and I don't eat, I don't eat no sugar. This is how he talked to me. And I was, I was like this, listen to this nigga. I was writing it down. I didn't have no pen and paper in my hand physically, but everything this nigga was saying, I was listening. Do, 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 do. And he said, man, you gotta do burpees, man. And I said, okay. And I went to my locker. I had some goddamn sodas and Three Musketeers and Milky Ways. I threw all that shit in the garbage. I threw all of that in the garbage. And from that day forward, I started drinking water with every meal and I cut out all the sugar. And I went from about 190 pounds, strong as an ox. I was strong as a motherfucker as 190, but I didn't look like nothing. I went from 190 pounds down to like 171, just following what he said, doing burpees, doing the spin bike, drinking water with every meal, eating tuna fish, eating mackerels, eating oatmeal, eating almonds, that's it. And slowly but surely, the abs started to come. Slowly but surely, the abs started to come. And once I got them, I began, once I started to see them, I went harder and I began to believe that I could get them. And then that's how I got them. And this is the best shape that I ever been in, in my life. You know what I'm saying? That's how I got that, that's how I got that turtle shell. That's how I got them balls of soap. That's how I got that goddamn turtle shell, man. Huh? That's how I got that turtle shell. I can't help I got a turtle shell and you don't. Go get your own turtle shell. You can't have my turtle shell. I got my own turtle shell. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you, Eric Brown. And thank you, your, your lady, man. Appreciate y'all for the support. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's what I do. You know, I'm 54 years old. I'm 54 years old. I don't take no medicine. I ain't been to the doctor in eight years. Nine, when I came home, 2016, I ain't been to the doctor one time since I came home from prison. Not once. I ain't had the flu, nothing. I'm gonna be showing that turtle chef, Xavier. I ain't go to the doctor, I don't go nothing. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Ain't nothing wrong with me. You see how good I look. You see how good I look. Goddamn nigga look right, man. I'm right. And then once I got my abs, and we used to come back in the mirror in the bathroom, oh man, I was talking cash shit then. I was talking cash. Yeah, nigga, look at my abs. Look at you, you ain't got no abs. Where your abs? Yeah, but your chest don't look like this. All we used to do, see, some of the most arrogant people you ever gonna meet, some of the most arrogant dudes in the world is in federal prison, man. Everybody bragging about what they the greatest this, I'm the greatest that. 
I can beat you with this. I could do this. You can't beat me that. I could do. Everybody bragging. Everybody conceited. Everybody's arrogant. And it's just you round a bunch of testosterone, egotistical, arrogant men. Uh, and like my man King Jabbar said, when you around a bunch of dudes like that, you will find out where you fit in that hierarchy, right? No, I wasn't the most alpha male man uh, in my unit or in my zone or in my, you know, I wasn't, you know? But you have to be confident and you have to be, you know? You know, you have to be. And like a lot of people come on my platform, my come on my Instagram, follow me on my Instagram, man, Gumby Publishing or Sean G on my Instagram. Um, a lot of people are offended by my arrogance and are offended by my conceit and by my ego. But this is civilians, like y'all are civilians. So you'll never understand the prison world where ain't no women, ain't no Rolexes, ain't no uh, AMG Mercedes, ain't no G-Wagon, ain't no BMW, ain't no Lamborghini, ain't no Louis Vuitton, Gucci, no designer, nothing. It's just you and who you are. And you have to be somebody. You don't got to be tough. You don't got to be, you know what I'm saying? But you got to goddamn be somebody, you know? And when you're around, like it was 1,100 dudes at Morgantown when I was there. And, you know, it was all competitive. Prison is a competitive, competitive, ultra super competitive place. And you never get to let up. There's never, oh, because it's Christmas tomorrow or it's Thanksgiving and we're getting a good meal, let's turn down the competitive. No, it was never a moment where you can relax and turn down your competitiveness. And that's why uh, like to me like for niggas that watch me that's been to prison they understand it and they write at home with it and I let them know that it's okay for them to be them and they let me know it's okay for me to be you for be me but to like civilians who've never been in that environment and you guys out here were taught to be politically correct fit in don't rub people the wrong way go along to get along uh, be humble that shit man you go to the feds man that shit ain't nowhere to be found nowhere to be found it's arrogance full blown full blown from everybody that's, that's why I am the way I am Anthony Gabello. Anthony Gabello, you're not a member, but I'm going to answer your question. I'm only taking questions from members. The chess, the chess competition is like uh, life or death. Every time you play chess with somebody, your whole chess reputation is at stake. Especially amongst the chess crew. Like, when I was in Gerard unit, there was a uh, sincere Mr. Me, uh, the nigga from Haiti, Jude, that nigga out of Virginia, um, Goosey, um, who else? Uh, Ice. 
law. So it was about it was about between eight to thirteen niggas that played chess every day, seven days a week, in the card room when we when they closed the compound, getting ready for dinner. And the upper echelon players, the dudes that were probably had high chess rankings, they wouldn't play you. If you wasn't good, they wouldn't play you. And they'll tell you to your face, say, you ain't good enough to play me. When you can beat him, then I'll think about playing you, right? Because the thought process is, if you play weaker players, it make your game weak. That's what they'll tell you. Say, nigga, me playing you will make my game weak. And the stronger the player that you play, and the more you get beat by a stronger player, the better you're going to become. So, you know, when you played, you had to show and prove every night that I can out of five games I'm going to beat you four out of five or out of ten I'm going to beat you seven out of ten and then you brag on that you become arrogant and you become conceited and you become egotistical about your chess game and everybody that you beat you remind you remind them when you see them at mainline when you see them in the law library when you see them in the library, when you see them in the weight pit, and you see them on the handball court, you remind them, I beat you at chess. Because you best believe if they beat you, every time they see you, they're going to remind and brag to you about how they better than you at chess. So it becomes a mental war that you have to protect your mind from these arrows trying to be shot in your head to make this person so you don't believe this person you can't beat him you gotta beat him and you keep playing him until you beat him so chess was uh, chess was was a serious serious thing serious thing and some dudes wouldn't even play you they were so good they wouldn't even play you until you beat somebody else yeah I had got good. I had got good. I was one of the tops in the unit. Not the top, nope. <coughs> yep, very serious. Super competitive. Roland Lee, man, thank you for your membership, man. Roland Lee, man, the floor is open. I open up the floor to all my members on the topic of self-love, man, so you want to you want me to touch on something dealing with self love just throw the topic on the floor but we keeping it on self love and that was with the chess see the more people you can beat the more you love yourself and see when you lose that's no good when you lose cuz everybody see you lose oh you beat him show you lost you beat him then you ain't gonna hear the end of it until you win. Always bragging, always arrogance, always conceit, 24 seven and don't never let up. And when a new dude come on the compound, when a new inmate come in, and he come in the chess room and he try to play somebody, we put the worst person, the person we know who's the weakest chess player, we put him on him first, on the new guy, play the new guy. And if he can't beat him, then we already know. I ain't even wasting no time with you because you just gonna make my game bad. That's it. That's it. What do you want me to do? This is my life. This is my real life. 
I'm not changing for you. I don't care if you like me or not. I don't like you neither. Good, we even. You don't like me, I don't like you. Good, let's keep it that way. <coughs> Shout out to all my members. Another question from my members. Join the channel membership. If you wanna be involved in this topic discussion on self-love, click on the channel membership link and you can ask a question. Somebody go buy this shirt right here. Hurry up. Go buy my shirt. Hurry up. My shirt better than your shirt. Look at my strawberries. Don't you wish you had one? You ain't getting one. Unless you go buy your own. I'm not welfare and food stamps. Section 8. I'm not wick. I ain't giving you nothing. I ain't giving you nothing. Go get it yourself. Go get it yourself. Next question, y'all. Come on, let's go. Rapid fire, let's go. I'm warm now. Y'all got me heated up. Y'all got me amped up. Y'all got me amped up. Y'all got me amped up. Join the channel membership. Let me put the channel. Y'all want me to put the channel membership up there? Let me put the channel membership up there. So y'all can see. You can join the channel membership. That's the link to the shirt. That's the link to the shirt. If you want to buy the shirt. questions all right there go my man Roland Lee if we had more self-love for ourselves we would think twice before we mistreat someone else I agree with you man That's the link for the channel membership right there. Yeah, if you love yourself, man. If you love yourself, man. If you love yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? You treat yourself right. You treat the world right, right? Because how you look at yourself is how you look at your world. If you got a negative attitude towards yourself, you're gonna look at the world from a negative perspective. Because you negative. You don't even like yourself. Let's turn this lamp on. Y'all want to turn this lamp on? Turn that lamp on right there. Let's turn this lamp on too. Join the channel membership. I just put it up there. It's right there. It's right there.
Come on, y'all. I'm on the road, man. I'm on the road, man. What's up? You like this shirt right here, don't you? Where are my female subscribers at? Where are my female subscribers at? Any females in here? Where are my female subscribers at? All my female subscribers, put the number four in the comment section. Put the number four. You one of my female subscribers. I know some of my female haters on here. Ha ha. I hate you too, fat girl. All my female subscribers, put a four in the live chat, in the comment. My female subscribers love me. Roland Lee, thank you for your channel membership. If everyone follow the topic of this video, we all could be better people. Shout out to my man Roland Lee down in St. Louis, channel supporter. Bought all my books, all my shirts, all my hats, hoodie, bucket hat, everything. Everything. There go my nigga Corey in. Corey ain't got that soul glow. Corey in, thank you for your channel membership. All right, so Corey, you gotta put up a top. You gotta you gotta put up a question on the topic. Self love, you gotta put something up. Thank you for joining the channel. So Corey got that soul glow. You see that green strip across there? Where my female subscribers at though, man? My female subscribers love me. They say Sean G looks so good. I wish I can kiss them. All my female subscribers. That's what they be saying. They be saying, I want to fuck Sean G. I want to fuck him. That's what they be saying. All my female subscribers. They do. Because they say I look good. They say I'm cute. I love beautiful women. I love beautiful women. Yes, I do. I love beautiful women. What's better than a beautiful woman, man? What's better than that? What's better than a beautiful woman? They love me too. They say, I wish I could meet Sean G so I can kiss his pretty lips. Then they want to touch my beard. Corey, thanks for joining the channel membership, man. Everybody join the channel membership, man. Join the channel membership. Let me put the channel membership link up there one more time for y'all, man. It's $10, that's all it costs. All it costs. All it costs is ten dollars. I only get seven. YouTube takes three plus three dollars right off the top. Whatever super, whatever super chat you give a YouTuber, whatever super chat you give me, we only get seventy percent of that. Google takes thirty percent off the top. So if you give somebody ten dollars, they only get seven. You pay tax on the seven at probably 50% or 40%. So the, the YouTuber ends up with probably about $4. What do you want from me? This is the truth. What do you want from me? They take 
I wonder if we got to pay tax on the $10 or the $7. That's a good question, right? It's a ripoff. They jerk us. Shout out to my nigga, Corey N. Staten Island represent. What's up, Corey? Corian, what actions one can take when they're working on self-love and are having inconsistent days? Great question. Great question. Corey, man, look. Look, man. You see me on those off days to stay right. You see me on my Instagram, at Gumby Publishing. Follow me on Instagram, everybody. Sean G at Gumby Publishing. You see me on my Instagram and you see me on my Facebook and my YouTube as perpetually confident most days. But Corey, this, this nine years in the making, this nine years of, this is the result of nine years of effort I just got here. But like you, when I first started, it was like this for me. Monday from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 minutes after 8, I was somewhat confident. Then at 8.09, I was in self-hatred. To about quarter to nine, I would go deeper into self-loathing. Then by 10 o'clock, I was back up to feeling all right. You know, Tuesday would come. I would work a good program for a couple hours. Then I would be, my point is, is that when you starting off, it's not going to be, oh, I'm going to make a decision to be self-confident. I'm going to be make a decision to have self-esteem. I'm going to make a decision to believe in myself. And because I make this decision, it's going to happen like that. Bullshit. You a lie. You a lie. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. And you can't goddamn look at me and base your progress in your own real life of what you see to me. This nine years, this is the culmination of nine years of work I done put in. But just like you, in the beginning, it was tough. It was up and down. But you got to keep working through it. You know, I did a lot of writing. I did a lot of writing. You know, journaling. I did a lot of journaling. I wrote down. I did a lot of writing, man. I did a lot of work on me, man. And then the longer you work, the more work you put in, the more consistent you become. Then you'll see yourself, you'll be going six hours straight of straight confidence. And then you'll dip off for an hour and 45 minutes and not have any. And then you'll come back. And then eventually, after weeks, months, and years, you'll see yourself going whole days, six, you know, four, five, six days in a row with a bad day. And then eventually it'll be every day. What you can't do is beat yourself up on them bad days and you just got to understand that that's a part of the process, man. <clears throat> that's a part of the process. You know, this shit take time. You know? Take time. And you gotta protect it. You gotta protect yourself. You gotta protect yourself. You gotta protect yourself. You gotta protect yourself. Just keep working, man. That's it. That's all I could tell you. And it's a process, it takes time. 
don't take hours, it don't take days, it don't take weeks, it takes years, you know? And you gotta be willing to put in the effort. For me, that was my experience. You, it may be quicker. You may be better than me. Maybe you could do it quicker. Where my female subscribers at, man? Hey. Where my honey's at, man? Just a bunch of dudes in here. My, f my female subscribers be liking to chill, though. They like to chill. They like to chill and watch Sean G. All right, what else? Nobody else? No more? Where my members at, man? Where my members at? Because if y'all ain't gonna say nothing, I'm finna get up out of here. Y'all ain't gonna say, no, nobody, none of my members ain't gonna say nothing else. Look at that. Look. I got one strawberry left. You want it? Never that. Go buy your own. Now, what about that? What about that? Hmm? Man, peace.